Hey y'all, I'm Jordan with Hey There Joe, and today I wanted to talk about something that I feel is very important and that might not be being addressed enough, especially with everything that's going on with COVID and Black Lives Matter, and there's a lot of uncertainty right now in the world. So I wanted to address mental health and talk about how important it is to maintain your mental health as best you can. A lot of people are struggling with their mental health right now, and it's really important that we take care of ourselves during this time. In order to nurture your relationships with your children, with your partners, your family, whoever whoever's close to you, whoever that may be, you have to be able to take care of yourself. You have to be able to say, you know, I feel okay right now. So today, basically what I wanted to do was just tell you a little bit about my situation um, and just kind of let you know what I've been going through and what tips I've come across that help me cope on those really rough days. So if you are a close family member or a friend of mine, you know that right now I'm actually based in Chile with my boyfriend and my daughter. Right now in Santiago in Chile where we're living, they have a system that essentially says you can't leave your house uh, unless you're going to run essential errands, walk the dog, things like that. Uh, they have a pass system that you have to go on and sign up for a pass. So our movements are really limited right now. And for me, that's and that's something that kind of kills my soul. It's something that's very difficult for me to accept, especially now that a lot of my friends and family in the States are kind of free to roam and do what they want. So essentially what I've done is three things. The first thing I've done is try to change the way I'm thinking about the situation. At the beginning, it was really difficult. I was thinking, I'm a prisoner, I'm trapped, I can't go anywhere, I can't see anyone. And that became really toxic because you know, you don't have a choice in situations like these. You can't control the pandemic. You can't control the city regulations and how they're handling healthcare and <clears throat> all that kind of thing. So the only thing you really can control that I realized is the way you're looking at things. So now I try to think of this as, okay, this is time to spend with my family one-on-one. -on -one. You know, when we go back to work, we're not going to be seeing each other all day, every day. And that will definitely have its benefits, but I think I'm gonna miss hanging out with Felipe and my daughter and, and being able to see her grow and change every day. I get to see every little milestone that happens because I'm here all the time. And also I try to think of this as temporary, right? This situation, I don't imagine it going on for an extended period of time, maybe a couple months, maybe a few years max, let's hope not. But if it does, you know, life will go back to some semblance of normalcy at some point. And I'd like to think that when that time comes around, I'll be feeling okay and maybe even will have picked up a few skills or new positive habits when that time comes around. So I'm trying to think of this as, where am I gonna be a year from now and will I appreciate what I'm doing? However, I do know that on the really rough days when I just, I'm in a really bad place mentally, I can't imagine being productive and doing something that I'll appreciate a year from now. So on those really rough days, all I do is just go into survival mode. I do the bare minimum, I do what needs to get done, and the rest doesn't really matter because on those rough days, you have to be forgiving to yourself. Which leads me to my second point. The second thing I try to do every day when I can is take care of myself. I try to shower, I try to brush my teeth, do my hair, wipe my face, you know, things of that nature because when you feel good physically, you're much more likely to feel good mentally. I also try to keep my environment clean as much as possible, which anyone who's had a toddler knows it's really not that easy, but I try to you know, keep it somewhat clean, the floors clean so that we can walk around, the dishes clean and done so that we can eat whenever we need to. And for me that makes a big difference because it doesn't take too much effort on my part and Felipe will always help me with these kinds of things too, but it does make a difference in my mental health. And finally, my third thing that I do, which has really been my saving grace, if I'm being honest, is goal setting. I set goals for every single day, and I put a list of, I think right now I have around nine goals, that they're very small things, they're easily done, but I like to set them up in a chart, and I like to have them there so that I can mark off each thing that I do. It gives me a sense of accomplishment, um, and I'm very much a list person, so I love crossing things off lists. So for me to see at the end of the day all the things that I did, it makes me feel better. It makes me feel productive and it still makes me feel human, you know, because when you're stuck inside all the time or when you're in a really low place mentally, I think you kind of disconnect from yourself and your own humanity. So I really like to do these goal setting and I'm actually going to take you through my goals and how I set them up so that if you feel that this is something you would like to do, you, you know, 
can do it the way I do if you want or you can change it however you want to do it. So I break my goals up into three different sections. I do physical goals, um, academic slash work type goals, and then fun goals. So for the physical goals, it's exactly what it sounds like. I try to get outside, get fresh air, I try to move any way I can, which usually involves me walking Penny around the building uh, or going out on the balcony. Sometimes <clears throat> when I'm feeling really optimistic, I will do a workout, but if I'm being completely honest, that doesn't happen all that often. Also, sometimes I will put in goals like drinking enough water, eating fruits and veggies, those kinds of things, because when you nurture your body, like I said before, you're much more likely to feel okay mentally. For me, the second type of goal that I have is academic slash work type goal. Um, right now, I'm not working. I did just get hired to teach English, which I will make another video about that, but I'm not actually starting until I finish my degree in August. So right now, all of my academic goals are exactly that, academic. I will do to-do lists for the week, and I will set goals for all the stuff that needs to get done uh, for my classes. And then the third type of goal that I like to do is fun goals. Generally for me that means something related to studying languages because for me that's just it's something that's fascinating It kind of fills me with joy and optimism and I just really love it But I know for some people you know that might be doing like arts and crafts or hobbies that you like to do or something like that That make you feel good because you're you're doing something that you love So I'm just gonna give you a little sneak peek of my goal system that I have here I have it on my iPad and essentially what I do is I make a chart and I put all of my goals with the date and then I basically just make it like a sticker system. I, I just use emojis but you can do it however you want to do it but I just will give myself a little sticker when I accomplish something and then at the end of the week, <coughs> excuse me, at the end of the week I will look over you know what did I do a lot of or what did I not do a lot of that I don't really want to include in next week's goals and then I like to just look at it and see, see what I'm doing essentially. My goals, just to give you a little sneak peek for last week, were to practice Japanese and Spanish, those were two of them, to get 10 minutes of move time, 10 minutes of outside time, which generally I will fulfill both of those goals by taking Penny for a walk around the building, or if I just am feeling really tired, I will go out on the balcony and get my 10 minutes of fresh air there, and then I will just get my 10 minutes of move goal by cleaning, or you know, sometimes we'll have like little dance parties or something if I'm feeling up for it. Also, I like to write every single day, even if it's not journaling, I like to, I just like to write with a pen and a paper. I also like to do schoolwork every day, which I just wrote schoolwork, and then if I feel that I've accomplished enough to call it good, I will just give myself the sticker. I also did showering and stretching, because showering for me is something that when I'm feeling really down, I just don't want to do it and obviously it's something that you have to do to maintain personal hygiene and I mean it's not like I go weeks without showering but a lot of times I don't shower you know as much as I normally do when I'm out and about living life normally so I do like to keep up with showering and doing my hair which anyone who has any sort of textured hair will tell you that it is a lot of work so that's something that I like to do and stretching I feel just makes me feel really good physically it's like yoga for a lot of people it just makes me feel good and and loose and warm you know and finally two liters of water that's my goal every day to drink water because if I don't I will usually get pretty dehydrated so actually I have these fancy little I don't know these little mason jar whatever you want to call them things uh, and they're a half liter each so I just tell myself okay gotta drink four of these a day easy peasy lemon squeezy and I've got another thing on my goals done so yeah that's essentially how I do my goal setting so if you guys have any questions or comments or if you want to let me know how you do any goal setting or how you cope with any of these things let me know in the comments below so the first tip I kind of already mentioned make sure that you are keeping in contact with people that you love with friends family whoever that may be stay connected to other humans especially if you're isolated right now alone or with only a few people I think it can really help you to connect to other people feel hum feel human maintain your relationships that sort of thing so I think it's really really important that you are keeping in contact with loved ones also Another thing that I've noticed for myself is I tend to really dive into social media. I love to spend time on my laptop or my phone or my iPad or whatever. And I actually have a feature, I think a lot of people who have... Oh no, I just spilled my water. I gotta go clean that up. <sighs> okay, so I just cleaned up that mess. I'm really clumsy as a person, so I have to deal with that kind of stuff a lot, so whatever normal stuff for me anyways so what I was saying 
talk with friends and family, put the screen away. Uh, what I like to do is have some sort of designated off time for screens. Usually it's when I'm hanging out with Penny, so I will put my phone away and all of my devices and I will say, okay, I'm not gonna look at any screens for the next hour because A, usually that comes with social media, which a lot of people will tell you social media can be very destructive to your mental health, especially if you're in a really tough situation and you go on and you see a bunch of people having fun that, you know, aren't necessarily following the same guidelines that you are or whatever that may be. The other thing is that if you're looking at a screen for a lot of your day, all day, every day, you're gonna start getting headaches and, well, at least for me, I get headaches, my eyes start to hurt, I feel sluggish and gross if I'm just sitting there looking at screens all day. So that's another big tip that I have is try to limit your screen time to like a certain time of the day or you know little bits throughout the day instead of just like sitting in front of the screen all day every day especially if you have kids if you can try to spend some good quality time with your kids or whoever you're with during quarantine and finally try not to be self-destructive this is a very important one for me and for probably a lot of people I tend to get self-destructive when I am really upset I will binge eat or I will go spiral in one of those like, oh my God, the world is ending, whatever um, type of thought processes. And really all you're doing is harming yourself. I know it's a lot easier said than done, believe me, I do. But it's something to keep in mind. Try not to be self-destructive. Try to be at least neutral if you can. And last but not least, I just wanted to tell you, if you need to have a meltdown, if you need to wallow in self-pity or feel depressed for a day or whatever that may be, you can do that. You are only human. If you need to just let all of those emotions out, if you need to feel all of those emotions, you should. You should let yourself do it for a day or two. Just cleanse yourself of all of those negative feelings. If you need to journal, if you need to vent to a friend, if you just want to sit and wallow and do nothing in bed, that's okay because every once in a while we just need to do those things. But ultimately what I'm trying to say is don't don't stay there. You know, let yourself feel the emotions, let yourself get through this this little wave of negative emotions, but then get back up and try again. Even if that trying is something as small as brushing your teeth or going for a walk or anything like that. Just make an attempt to take care of yourself. So that was a pretty heavy topic. But thank you guys for watching the video. Thank you for sticking around. Let me know in the comments what you thought of the video. If you wanna share where you're at right now or if you just wanna reach out and let me know how you're doing, feel free to do that in the comments. Um, yeah, and thanks for watching.